Today I'm with Victoria Ritchie, a dear friend who's also an astrologer, psychologist and Eckhart Tolle's editor. She lives normally in America, but she's also a bit of a nomad and she's been coming to the Côte d'Azur. Well, I've known her for over six years now, promoting various workshops with her and we've been very blessed. And today we're going to talk about some other things that she does. So Victoria, please tell the audience, when did you first become interested in astrology and why? Well, it wasn't a recent jumping on the bandwagon because astrology was an in thing to do. Uh, on the contrary, I started when I was 10 years old because I went to a private girls school all the way through. In America, we have 12 uh, grades and there were about 14 of us in the class and being very observant and watching people all the time and watching very subtle things about them without ever mentioning it, of course, uh, I noticed how different people were. And coincidentally, I think around the same time, we had these little machines in candy stores and you could put like five cents in and instead of a candy coming out, a small scroll would come out like it was parchment paper. And there were 12 all together that you could collect. And they were, of course, each of the 12 signs. And they were printed very, with tiny little lettering on both sides. So, of course, I got all 12 eventually, having gotten doubles and triples. And, and then I pasted them in a notebook. But since they were printed on both sides, I had to wait and get each sign, the front and the back. so that I, And then I studied them. And I, I was always a little student. I always loved to study. And then I started putting those studies next to those girls. And I still remember their names, Joy Price, the Aries, and Joanne Hack, the Gemini, and Barbara Stein, the Capricorn, still in my mind. But they were the laboratory where things got started. And then when I got old enough to go to bookstores, I started looking for maybe a book on astrology. That would really be climbing up a level. And I found a book, maybe when I was 16 or so, and studied and studied and studied. And eventually, as I got older, I kept getting more books and studying more. So I taught myself. And at the same time, constantly watching people and wanting to know, what is your birth sign? So wow. that's, that's how it began. But I think it came over from another life, because certainly... I did not come from the kind of family that had any kind of esoteric interest whatsoever. The last thing they were interested in it was something I almost remembered and I brought with me. Wow, I know you're passionate about esoteric work because you worked in the bookstore in London. Watkins, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So when did you become a professional astrologer and what are your qualifications? Well, I started as a professional astrologer because I have very high standards, so I wouldn't let myself loose, so to speak, with people in an ethical way until I felt I really, really knew what I was doing. So I was in my 30s by the time I decided, okay, now I will do readings and put my shingle up, so to speak. And from that time on, there's been no looking back. Uh, and I've lived in many different places since then. I lived in London, back and forth to San Francisco and Los Angeles and Copenhagen. I went to Spain for a while, doing readings always. Uh, people would always ask me to do a reading for them. I've been, as you mentioned, to begin with nomadic. I've Sag rising, typically nomadic. and. Also, satirizing, typically very scholarly, very studious, always wanting to learn something more, and still that way. And I mentioned you were also a psychologist, so what is the connection between astrology and psychology? Yeah, when I, when I got to mid-late 30s, I decided uh, I'd been at Watkins. I was the manager of Watkins Books in London. It's a very prestigious uh, metaphysical bookstore you've been there it was yeah. the first metaphysical bookstore on the whole planet in fact and it's still going and uh i i felt like i was bumping my head on the ceiling and uh i needed a new challenge and 
astrology is actually psychology. It's looking into people and how they function, what they're all about, who they are. And I thought, oh, I know I want to be a psychotherapist now. I'll study that. So I went uh, from London to San Francisco. I went to school there and I got a master's degree in psychology and I was trained to be a psychotherapist. And I realized through that study that in fact I didn't want to be a psychotherapist because I saw that it was too limited for what I was interested in. Mm. Astrology could get to the matter diagnostically much faster. Psychology, you know, you sit around with someone 55 minute sessions, year in, year out, things eventually trickle in about their core issues. Whereas with astrology, ying, I can zoom right in. I can understand exactly who this person is and what their issues are, what's stopping them, their issues with their family of origin, with their parents and their, their partnership issues and so forth. And I kept getting requests always to do readings. And just naturally, uh, when it came up, you had to do uh, in California where I live, to be qualified by the state, you have to go through an internship that lasts for nearly five years. You have to see clients usually in the evenings and you don't get home until 10 or 11 at night. I'm not a nighttime person, I'm an early morning person. It just, I, I lost my interest in it, just fell away. And I decided, no, I, I want to continue with astrology. But I had learned certain things uh, that were useful in psychology that backed up certain astrological principles and knowings that I had. So it wasn't a wasted study, not at all. It really enhanced the work. And uh, I was able to sit more with astrology clients. And sometimes they want to go on uh, with counseling. And I do that too. And it's very informal. Uh, it's however many sessions they want. But if they have a particular issue that the chart has brought up and they want that clarified and they want to go into it and work more deeply with that, then I'm equipped and prepared to do that. And it works very well. It's very healing to the client. And we focus on it, sometimes even two sessions, or sometimes five, six sessions, but a lot of work gets done that way. So that's where the psychotherapy is also used along with astrology. That's fantastic. I, obviously, I've had a reading with you and you were spot on and the psychotherapy and the astrology go hand in hand. So I've been interested in this topic since I was young, but why would someone typically come to you for an astrology reading and how does that reading benefit the client? Yes. They come, usually they come for a reading because they feel something, some energy gathering within, or they feel some sort of inherent shift, or they feel they're on the edge of some sort of abyss with things changing. Something becomes sort of untenable, or um, they just sense that I'm very confused, I need some light to be shown upon what's going on right now. And usually friends send them, you know, someone knows them and their friend is aware of their situation and the friend might know me too and say, well, you, you must have a reading. That's really going to help you clarify. By the way, I don't advertise. I've never in all my professional life ever advertised. Uh, I feel that whatever clients need to come to me, they, we connect but I don't like to put my name out. I trust some other inner network, and that's always worked. I have plenty of clients, so I've never needed to advertise. And the way they benefit from a session is that, first of all, it's very confirming because many clients come and they're very uh, sensitive, intelligent, intuitive beings, and they, they have feelings about things that are going on but they don't know, is, is this really happening or is this possibly my imagination? And so the reading, and by the way, I'm not woo-woo, even one half of a percent, no woo-woo here. Uh-uh, no, I'm a scientist and I know how to read symbols. And a birth chart is someone 
in symbol form. That's all it is, all it is and, and everything that it is. And I'm able to read those symbols to very, very deep levels. And that's what I'm doing. And so, therefore, the reading is always accurate because I'm not subjectively pulling in anything or my opinion about what a client should do or what's happening to a client. I'm simply reading what those symbols are telling me. And uh, it always correlates with the client's experience. They say things like, but you don't even know me. You've totally nailed me. How did you do that? You know everything about me. But it's all there if you know how to read those symbols. It's so clear, but it takes years of study to do it well. Yes, so, I, mm -hmm. I know you're very experienced, and all my friends, including myself, rant and rave about you because you are spot on. Thank so you. what about in details for the listeners? What does a reading cover, and what kind of information can the client expect? Yes, the reading has two aspects. The, the first two-thirds of the reading is a very deep examination of the natal chart, also known as the horoscope, the 10 planets that everyone has, plus the ascendant. So we're looking at 11 placements, the signs, the houses involved, and how those uh, planets connect up if there's any kind of major angle between them. That's what astrochemistry is. You know, you pour a little Venus into a test tube with a little Saturn at 120 degrees, and this is what you get. <laughs> or you throw a little Mars in the test tube with some Uranus, and they're like two degrees apart, and whoa, explosive, that's what you get. So that's what we're talking about. It's very descriptive of, as I said, the client, their basic character, their core issues, their relationship with their early family, their relationship needs and styles, their usually what they need in terms of uh, uh, work, uh, not the work that you do to earn a living early in your life to put food on the table, but what, what's your real work? What did you come here to do? Maybe you don't even get paid for that work, or maybe eventually, as you get older, you get paid for that work. But it's usually something you know about very early in your life, and that's what is really leading you through your life. You're moving in that direction, often without even seeing it, but the chart can see it very clearly. So people are very grateful for that perspective on, on that true work. These days, people are very concerned about what kind of contribution can I make? Where are my talents? What do I have to offer that can benefit those around me and the, the planet itself? So astrology can tell that. So that's the first half of the reading. And the latter part of the reading is looking at what's called in astrology transits. It's nothing about riding the subway or anything. <laughs> it has to do with how astrology is all about cycles. Everything is cycles. You know, we just don't really back off sometimes enough to see that there are cycles that are going on. But the moon goes around your chart once a month and the sun goes around once a year. Happy birthday. Uh, Mer <laughs> Mercury takes a year, Venus takes a year, Mars takes two years, Jupiter 12, Saturn 29, Uranus 84, Neptune and Pluto over 200. And so as an astrologer, I'm not concerned with the ephemeral quick moving transits because they don't cause deep lasting change. I'm looking at the slow moving transits, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And as those planets move, and if and when they make a major angle to a natal planet in your chart, it's like shining a spotlight on that area of your being and saying, okay, you've taken it as far as you can take it in that form, time to ha change it up here. And, and the reading will tell you how it will change it, what departments of your life is that change about to show up in. And it's connected with alchemy as well. Saturn transits are very grounding. They're the beginning of new endeavors in your life. And Uranus transits, uh, they're, they're connected, uh, Saturn transits, the coagulatio in alchemy. Uranus transits, the sublimatio in alchemy, going up high, suspending yourself, like being in a plane 
and looking at your life with a long perspective and being able to see it from far away and then getting that aha, <laughs> ah, oh, and waking you up. You know, if in any way you've gotten in some sort of, I call it the egoic coma, so you've gone to sleep in this sort of egoic rocking chair, ah, <laughs> Uranus transits come and they shake you like lightning, wake you up and your life can suddenly flip uh, some people love those transits, others don't like them so much. Very earthy types tend not to like them, airy types love them. So I guess you prepare people during the reading when Uranus or Saturn are going to be in their charts. I tell them when they're going and the, uh, I look all this information up. Um, there's a certain amount of preparation, it's not just sitting down, a session is 90 minutes, but I spend about two hours preparing beforehand, so it's a lot of yes. work involved. And it's very intense work because I have to look up exactly when, by degree, these planets are going to have some relationship with the natal planets. And so I give all these dates to the client uh, okay. so they know when to expect these. And it can be a year forward. Uh, and with uh, Neptune and Pluto transits, we could be looking two, three, four years into the future. Right. I was just <laughs> about to say, too, so because you mental natal a few times, so is the focus on the natal horoscope or on the future or both? Both. Both. Okay. Uh, we have to have a natal horoscope upon which to set the transits. It's like that's the skeleton. And then uh, the changes that go on, that it really the transits are about what's coming to give you an opportunity to awaken, to open a new door, to go in a new direction, to get fresh inspiration. Fantastic. People love transits. So how do clients typically respond to a reading? Well, they always, when I do them at home, these days I do... Fewer and fewer at home, uh, even when I'm in, at home in California, it uh, used to be in the old days, 10 out of 10 clients would be at my house. Yeah. Now, 2 out of 10, or maybe 1 out of 10. The rest are on Skype in other parts of the state, sometimes in Europe. And their response, I see them in my house, more, they're, they're always thrilled with their reading. And sometimes a person comes in the door, and I see a little me, this kind of tight and a little bit suspicious what's this reading going to be about and by the time they read a read leave little me is dissolved in a puddle and this larger connection of who they really are has been awakened and they leave in this sort of radiant state they kind of stumble to the door sometimes they forget to pay me because they're on a totally different <laughs> level you know they're not and they're always so happy with their reading and they feel as though something has been confirmed and they see who they really are. For some people, it's life-changing. And they say uh, that it's been, it's like a life reading. They see finally uh, and get confirmation for who they really are. And I find that the more conscious someone is, the more they get from the reading. Wow. <clears throat> Sometimes someone will, I don't know, send me their mother or... You know, they'll have a great reading and they're kindly, they want to share it and give it to some. But if that other person isn't that conscious, it kind of goes over their head. They, they like it, but when someone is deeply conscious and present and there, then those are the people that really get it. Fantastic. And, um, and then they tend to listen to, they, there's a recording made. And uh, they play that recording, sometimes, some people play it over and over, and they tell me they always hear something different, and they find out something new about themselves. And sometimes with transits, especially Neptune transits that are sort of vague, people will sit there with me and I'll tell them about a transit and I can see like, huh? -huh. <laughs> and then they come back for a follow-up update reading a year or two later and they'll say, you know, I didn't know what you meant by that uh, transit you were talking about, but wow, it came out exactly like that. That's um, wonderful for you as well. And I feel you initially talk about people come and they find their life purpose, maybe not the purpose that they initially thought they were doing, but 
what is in the innate. Yes. So, yes. And you've just mentioned consciousness. So, how do you feel astrology provides a service that enhances and elevates consciousness? Because astrology is able to, first of all, reveal more clearly where the pain body lies in someone. And knowing Eckhart Tolle's teachings deeply, of course, I'm very aware of the pain body and how that shows up in the psyche. And I can see it in a, in a, in a chart. And so I focus in on that and talk about that. And of course, when the pain body begins dissolving um, and one backs away from it and realizes that's not who I am, then consciousness begins to grow as the pain body uh, begins to shrink. You know, they're in a, a relationship with one another in that way. And the more readings people have, some people, I've been seeing them for 25 years, and they come every year for a reading. Wow. Others will wait sometimes. That's why I keep my email, the same AOL email in America. That's like an ancient email address. But I keep it because old clients from 10 years ago, 15 years, they'll write an email. Are you still doing readings? That was such a terrific reading, and I'm ready for another one. But I can always see with repeat clients how they've grown, how they keep getting more conscious. And they tell me that, too. As a result of the reading, they can't go back anymore to their old kind of pain body, uh, contracted, fearful way of being that's causing them so much pain and suffering. So you mentioned some people come back each year and others come back. Um, yes, periodically. Periodically. And do they have a, a new reading each time? Well, it, people, uh, after first reading, they're always so happy. They say, when can I come back for another reading? And I say, well, not for at least a year. And then wait and see how you feel. Some people come, you know, they're uh, like they might have a very Virgo organized kind of chart and they put it on their calendar, December, go for my reading. And they'll come, you know, every December. Others wait until they can feel organically something's going on. They know something is shifting and they want some light uh, shown upon what is that change? What's the nature of it? And it might be two or three years or more since they've had their initial reading, but they come again. So it's really up to the client to decide. And they're very intelligent. They know when they need a reading. And it's wonderful that you've made the comment that people are waking up. Oh, yes. It's um, great from such an experienced person to you know, share that information oh, with us. I have one client. I just adore her. She's been coming... I met her at a tarot workshop maybe 25 years ago, and we just connected, and she's come every year. She has a very heavy moon in cancer, which is a heavy pain body in the way it's aspect, and she used to spend most of the reading with a box of tissues just crying, uh, so miserable and so such a pain body, and it was a lot of poor me and or. And now she comes for readings, and she's just a completely transformed person. And we laugh about the old <laughs> days when it used to be, and we would talk about that, because organically in the reading, I know where to go, what the person needs to work on. I could cover the chart thoroughly, but I know where extra attention is needed. Uh, because that's where the healing needs to come in. And with her, it was always that moon in cancer. And uh, now she's just a different person. She said, it's if I hadn't had the readings, I never would have been able to do what I do now. She's an extraordinary person. She's very Gemini, so she's very intelligent as well. She can see all that. But she was pulled down by this pain body always. Mm. Excuse me, Beverly, what were you going to say? I was going to ask you, because you're mentioning the different signs, Gemini and so forth, um, when people come to visit you, do you say to them about their moon rising? Uh, or moon? You mean just casual people that come? That I'm, or no, when clients. you do a client, yes. Oh, I talk about every uh, all ten of their planets plus the ascendant in depth. Yes. Yes, I cover everything. 
-hmm. just so the listeners know, because if people have never been to you for a reading or to an astrologer... Ah, yes. well, the big three is what I focus on first, the sun, the moon, and the ascendant. After having talked about the elements, some people have loads of air and hardly any earth, so they're totally up in the air, lost in thought all the time, and they're utterly impractical. They, they can hardly boil water. Uh, whereas people that have so much earth, uh, they can be so pragmatic that they get lost in the routines of everyday life and they don't really have much of an imagination. So we talk about the elements. Yeah. Uh, and then we talk sun, moon, and ascendant. And then the other planets and how they connect. So it's all thoroughly covered. It, I go about it systematically. And you're always listening when people say Mercury's in retrograde and things like that. Well, Mercury so. goes retrograde three times a year. And usually people know, they know these days about Mercury retrograde and the Saturn return. I'm surprised Hallmark is not making cards now saying <laughs> happy Saturn return or oh, Mercury retrograde. Yes, planet, cl planets, cl uh, clients <laughs> and planets, planets. Uh, they they have that uh, understanding. Some don't want to have a reading when Mercury's retrograde, but I I don't go for that at all. Mercury retrograde can also deepen the mind and the understanding, so it can be actually a good time to have a reading. It's always um, a good time to have a reading. I guess from my point of view, loads of people would go, my computer's not working, or techno <laughs> stuff is not working. That's, oh. that's right. Mm -hmm. Or traveling, you know, the plane is like, I uh, had to sit in the airport for six hours because my flight was canceled, things like that, Mercury retrograde, yes. And mm -hmm. I guess as an astrologer, I'm sure you cringe when people talk about their horoscopes that you read in the newspaper, for example. That is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, think of the most uh, elegant, esoteric kind of soup you could get in a four-star Michelin restaurant in Paris. Uh, and think of throwing an onion in a pot with some water and calling that soup. <laughs> That's the difference between a real astrology reading and reading that is such generalized, meaningless, really, uh, astrology in the paper or magazine. Yeah, so I know when I used to work with the rugby teams, when we had tarot readers, for example, all the young girls be lined up, am I going to get married? So would people come to you for questions like that? Um, I'm not really, that's a fortune teller. And some people want to mistake me for a fortune teller, and I don't talk about precise events. I talk about how energy is moving archetypally. And I always say to people when we start with transits, you know, I'm not with a scarf around my head <laughs> and a crystal ball. I'm not going to tell your future. It's not my function. But I can tell you if new relationship energy wants to come in, or if it seems that there's an importance in, in relation to, say, marriage or the forming of a relationship, you can see the forming of a relationship and you can also see the cutting of a relationship because it's time maybe some people, you know, they're in a relationship for 30 years and then an influence comes in and usually it's Uranus and they need a new experience. They need to be woken up in a new way through relationship. So I, I'm not a conventional kind of person in the way I look at a chart either. I guess I'm an old hippie, so I'll never be <laughs> conventional. It, it, it doesn't come, come that way. But I'll also I speak whatever language the client speaks, and I tune in right away to where they are. And the thing is that I don't want them to go out the door and say, what the hell was that all about? Because then they've wasted their money and it's useless to them. And the point is that they understand the chart. And I get many clients that come and they're astro junkies. You know, they've had four, five, six readings, but they don't even know what's happened. They don't understand their chart. And they tell me after the reading, oh, finally I understand my chart because you speak in a language that I can really understand. You're telling me what those symbols that are me, what that is saying in real English. 
That's the important part because really they're hiring me as an interpreter. I'm an interpreter of symbols, of astrological symbols. I know how to translate that chart that looks like Greek to anybody else into pure, simple English that's sensible and useful. And many astrologers don't do that. And so clients come out of there very confused and like perplexed and like, well, that was a non-experience. I, I don't want them to have that. I want them to really know what the chart said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for being present and for all your wonderful studies and sharing your knowledge with thank us. Thank you. So Pleasure. If people do want to contact you, which is the best way? By email? The best way is by email with my old fashioned <laughs> AOL email. And it's uh, my email address is very easy to remember. It's Victoria, like my name, like Queen Victoria, Victoria. Run that together with the planet Uranus, my favorite planet. <laughs> Uh, U-R-A-N-U-S, so Victoria Uranus at AOL.com. And you'll understand that, but when I talk on the phone and have to tell, like, the electric company or something, <laughs> uh, uh, <Uranus>, what's that? <laughs> but I'm sure you'll understand, Victoria Uranus at AOL.com. Sometimes there's a wait, and sometimes not such a wait. It depends what my schedule is like, but... I always trust that people get the reading exactly when they need to have the reading. Sometimes they're not ready to hear something for a month or two down the line. And they wanted to read, oh, I must have a reading now, but I don't have room. And then two months later when they get the reading, they say, oh, but I couldn't have understood. I, I'm so glad the reading was now because I couldn't have heard this before. So in a way, life is timing it, not me. So I trust that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I love talking about astrology. <laughs>